So it has been a little bit since I've done an update on the 2021 Yamaha R6 race bike build for the Moto America season this year. We changed the dash on the bike where we put the GS dash for the AIM system, made a carbon plate for that, and I just mail to mail Velcro that to the fairing today. We're using the OE switches on the left hand side for right now. Um, we went through, cut those out, cut the horn out, cut the extra stuff out, unsoldered it, heat shrunk it again, so it's just looking a bit nicer, a bit better, some of that. We cut holes in the fairing stay and mounted the AIM system USB port into there and then also attached the TransLogic auto warm up switch button to the other part of the fairing stay. When we put the dash onto the bike, what we had to do is we had to take the stock dash and put it on top of the fairing stay. There's data that gets synthesized through the dash, so if you just unplug the dash, the Yamaha factory dash, the bike won't run and that's it. It's kind of annoying, but it is what it is. On the old bike, the front air snorkel is quite a bit shorter, so you can't put the dash on the top of that. But with the new bike, it's quite a bit longer, so we were able to just put the dash on the other side put a piece of foam underneath it and just cable tie it together so pretty good um, on the right hand side one of the things that I had no idea about and if you follow my Instagram stories you would have kind of seen this happen but the OE switches on the right handlebar don't work with a YEC kit harness it's really weird and it doesn't make any sense to me but what my dad ended up doing is we took one of the power switches for the old bike that we had laying around and my dad repinned that and then also just pinned another momentary switch to be able to change engine maps it's kind of weird and it doesn't really seem right but we're going to be getting like super bike switches for it a little bit later on but this is what we had to do to just be able to get the bike to run for these couple of tests um, again it makes no sense but if you're running the YEC stuff and you're wondering why doesn't my bike fire up or why does none of this stuff work on this right hand switch that's why uh, mounted the data system and that was fun we're using the AIM EVO 5 for this year last year we ran the EVO 4S which was good but there's just some stuff that's kind of nicer with the EVO 5 where you're not having to like wrap a bunch of cables in different places we mounted it basically where the normal battery goes so we're able to bring everything forward because the mounting place for the old bike, the subframe is quite a bit different. So it's just finding different ways to do some of the same things. So mounting that in there, we have front potentiometer, rear potentiometer, front brake pressure. And then we had to put in our own CAN bus connection, which in the back of the bike. Um, we first got it in, tried using it, and it wasn't working right. But that was because I had the wrong thing selected in the AIM system. For the new Yamaha R6, you don't select the one that says R6, you select Yamaha CAN 2015, I think it was called, and that works fine, and then you get all the actual sensors and all the data from the dash. The new bike has so much more information than the old bike. You get APS, TPS, so that's what your hand is doing and what the actual throttle plates are doing as well, so that's pretty interesting. For the rear potentiometer, I had some friends over at Mays Moto here in Indiana. They made me a rear potentiometer bracket, so we put that on. It's looking pretty good. We put a battery in the bike. Um, we put the battery in the very back uh, and fo put foam around it and just cable tied it in. It was good enough for the first couple of tests, and then we will go from there. We're getting some new batteries in, so may have to move them again. Not really sure. Overall, it's pretty good, but kind of go from there. It's not the prettiest thing, but I don't really care if it's pretty. I just want it to be functional, and as long as we're having the weight in the proper point, that's great. A couple other things. I added the TransLogic Auto Blip to the bike. Um, it doesn't require any of the changing pins like you have to do for the old bike, but that was only just for the quick shift. So with the Auto Blip, plugged that in, put power to it, had no problems. Um, and the other thing that we did is we got rid of the ABS module where if you look at the YEC manual, it says that you have to run the 
ABS module to like synthesize some of the data. What we did um, crew chief recommended we got these flash tune plugs so what they do is they eliminate that whole module kit. They say with some of these flash tune pieces they may go bad or some stuff like that so we got three of them just so we don't have to worry about anything. I'd rather have too many than not enough and be sitting in a race and all of a sudden one of these goes bad and we're freaking out because we don't have a replacement. Got multiple of them so then don't really have to worry about it. Then some of the other things is for the potentiometer brackets we use the quick ball uh, pieces at the bottom just so we can pop them on and off and not have to be worrying about a bunch of different stuff or unscrewing a bolt or whatnot. In the first test one of the things that we realized is the potentiometer wasn't quite lined up correctly where it needed to be out a bit further where it was too far in and I was breaking into the corner and I I don't know how this is the case but I've had it happen twice so far but I've had a aim front potentiometer hold the entire weight of my front end I don't know how it happened this one was only at Jennings so there wasn't that much force plus it was in the rain but I had it last year at Barber where it just hits the bottom of the stroke and then just stops which is crazy but it did send it twice now so it's not a fluke whatever aim does to make their potentiometers are freaking bulletproof <laughs> um, and then we also put on a Robbie Moto front potentiometer bracket for the top of the fork leg it's super nice where it's just a clamshell design it pops on and off so I'm not having to pull the whole fork out or we aren't having to pull the whole fork out to just change a potentiometer you undo one bolt and the whole thing pops off plus it's metal it's not a piece of carbon it doesn't crack so we ran them last year and found them to be great.